Okay. So thermal and equilibrium, let's see if I can, uh, I'm going to do a screen share with my bamboo pad. And you um, can probably start a new one of these. Um, so when we're talking about like Delta G, that is the free energy and that's the energy available for a reaction. And the more negative it is, the more spontaneous it is, the more likely it's just going to occur on its own. Right. And if it does that, if it moves towards that, then K usually is uh, larger. Or it's, it's, I don't know, I, I don't know, it's all relative, I guess, to a certain extent, but um, you're moving towards uh, more products. Okay. Okay. If it's positive then it's non-spontaneous and it would require something to get it going. So it usually requires some energy or something and it's, and K is going to be a little bit smaller and it's going to favor, I should, instead of more, I should say favor, favor the reactants. Okay. Um, and so usually they're connected like that, but interestingly enough, you, you can still do a delta G equals negative RT natural log of K. And so this is one of those things where um, the smaller your K is, uh, especially if you get lower than one, then it's going to be natural log of that number is going to be um, negative and a negative times a negative gives you a positive. Does that make sense? Um, okay, wait, can you say that again? Okay, let's, well, let's do this. Let's, do you have your calculator right there? Yes. Okay. And so if you did, let's say you just did 0.5, you took natural log of 0.5. Okay. Okay. And that's a number that's less than one. So if I did that, if K was equal to 0 0.5, the natural log of K ends up being equal to negative 0 0.69. Okay, so that means that delta G would be equal to negative 8.31 times, let's just say it's delta G naught, so, and we're going to say it's, it's 298, 298 Kelvin times negative 0 0.69, that's the natural log of K, and a negative times, uh, a negative times a negative gives you a positive, right? Right. So that means that delta G does not is equal. It's a positive, and that means that you have. And then you could find that connection. So where delta G was positive, K was smaller. K was a 0.5. Now if K becomes larger than one, so if you plug even just 1.5, so natural log of 1.5 in your calculator, then you get a positive number. Right. And now delta G naught is negative. And that's how it favors that the, say that again? That makes sense. Okay. So that's kind of, kind of trying to be tricky like that. Now, if, here's the fun one, here's the really fun one. If uh, you are at equilibrium, so you have one, right? Partition reactants are equal. So if you did natural log of one, what do you get? Oh, you get zero. Zero. So you just have... Delta G equals zero. Right. So Which is why okay. Yes, so at at equilibrium where K is equal to one, delta G is equal to zero. And we'll say delta G naught. So del because delta G naught is equal to negative R T natural log of K and natural log of if and if K is equal to one, natural log of one is equal to zero. So that's our delta G naught is equal to zero. That, 
that's pretty important. And that's, that's what they use if they want to establish the, um, they said, okay, what, at what temperature does the reaction become spontaneous or become non-spontaneous? And that, the idea there is that when it's spontaneous, the K is greater than one. If it's non-spontaneous, then it's less, less than one. So, um, so that at that point then, if delta G is equal to zero and you have the delta G is equal to delta H uh, minus T delta S and where oops, delta G not is equal to zero, then you have zero is equal to delta H minus T delta S and you get that um, delta H is equal to T delta S. And so if they want to know that just the temperature, temperature is equal to delta H over delta S. So that's like, at what temperature does it become non-spontaneous? That's how you would find that. Okay. All right, so I, it sounded like somebody else joined. Oh, Caitlin Solomon. Yeah, I got to work. Oh, wait, right on. <laughs> it's the two Caitlin. Yes, absolutely. Um, so just to catch you up, Caitlin Solomon, we were talking about just the relationship between uh, delta G and K, or delta G and equilibrium. And the fact that uh, delta G is about free energy and the, the energy that's available. And so um, if delta G is negative, which seems like that's kind of what you want because then it's spontaneous, it's gonna go forward, uh, K is larger, it favors the products. So, and I should have done that instead of writing more. Actually, why don't I just erase that? So in case anybody comes back and checks that out. Okay. Favors products. Um, I'm sorry, girls, just give me a second. Uh, apparently, I'm being too loud and keeping my daughter up, so I need to text my wife and tell her that I will be more quiet. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right, so, um, so, and then if K is, all right, I'm sorry, so that's how, if K is larger than one, usually, um, so we could say if K is larger than one, then it's gonna favor the products and it's gonna make delta G negative, it's gonna be spontaneous. If K is less than one, then um, delta G will end up being positive. It's a non-spontaneous because it's smaller and it favors the reactants. And the reaction we looked at was delta G naught is equal to negative RT natural log of K. And so the trick is to know what happens with the natural log of K. So we used our calculators and we said, oh, well, What's the, sorry about that, the natural log of 0 0.5? Well, that's a negative 0 0.69. And so then a negative times a negative is a positive. So we know that delta G is positive because of that. It's, um, so in, right there, products over reactants, if it's really small, it's going to favor the reactants. And then I think the part that you came in on is we were talking about um, that delta G, oops, no, I went too far. Uh, well, we just, we just did delta G um, equals negative RT natural log of K if it was 1.5, and then it's a positive, so then delta G ends up being negative. So now that was a product-favored equilibrium. And then we just said at equilibrium, where K is equal to 1, if we did natural log of K, then um, that's natural log of 1, which that is equal to 0. And so you can know that delta G naught is equal to 0 when K is equal to 1. So... Um, and usually the way the question is worded, like they say, well, you know, you can, you can figure out the, if, if it's not at equilibrium, um, if the question says at equilibrium, this is just always true. Oops. I did it again because there's questions on my last test and there's questions on this test. Let me get this to back here where it says at equilibrium, what is true? And um, you have to remember that delta G naught is equal to zero at equilibrium every time. Don't, don't get that messed up. So do you guys, did you guys remember that already? Yeah. Kind of. Well, and, and yeah. So it, it, it just talks about that. If it's, if it's not favoring one side or the other, it's kind of a weird way of doing it. But so... Um, and then we just talked about if you were looking for, where delta G naught is equal to zero, if a product becomes spontaneous or becomes non-spontaneous, 
that's where if delta G is delta G nine is equal to zero because it's at equilibrium, it's not spontaneous or it's not non-spontaneous. It's just static. Um, it's just you know equilibrium in both directions. Then if delta G nine is equal to zero, then you can do that. Zero is equal to delta H minus T delta S, and solve for the temperature. And that would be the temperature at which, if you go above that temperature, possibly it becomes spontaneous. If you go below that temperature, it's non-spontaneous, something to that effect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just remember, at equilibrium, delta G is equal to zero. Um. I would uh, say also while I'm thinking of it, probably half the multiple choice is um, not related to calculations. It's more like a process, thinking process. Like, you know, what does it mean for entropy? What does it mean for free for delta G or delta S? You know, what kind of kind of do you understand um, what that concept is? Like if it's if it's delta, I mean if if you've increased entropy or, you know, um, entropy of course you you are moving towards increasing entropy is moving towards a system of more microstates that are available or more possible. Um, you have with entropy you have big jumps going from a solid to a gas or a liquid to a gas. That's a really big jump. But going from a liquid or going from aqueous to solid is, I'm sorry, solid to aqueous is not as large as going from aqueous to gas or liquid to gas. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Can you go over number six from the test? Absolutely. Let's see, number six was about, oh, that's kind of a good segue actually. Um, oh, I should probably open that up actually so we can look at it. I apologize. Give me a moment to just open that up. So um, let's just take a look at it real quick so you guys can, I mean, just in case, maybe he doesn't have that all down. To the share. All right, and I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, can you guys both see that pretty well? Yeah. Okay. So solid ammonium chloride, which is a solid, uh, is added to water at 25 degrees Celsius. It dissolves and the temperature of the solution decreases. Which of the following is true for the values of delta H and delta S for the dissolving process? So um, if I was going to, I'm going to switch over to my bamboo tablet and write this up. Okay. Let's go to a new page. All right. So if I have uh, ammonium chloride, NH4Cl solid, and it is going to, uh, um, it would go to, it would dissolve. So we probably have some, what would just say NH4 plus, which is aqueous plus Cl minus, which is also aqueous. Okay, um, we could say that the delta S for this is definitely positive. I mean, we're going from a solid to aqueous, so we know that to be true. Um, and really, I mean, we, we only have so many options. Two of them already have delta S positive, so we know it has to be A or C. And then we have to talk about delta H. Uh, if the temperature of the solution decreases, so that means that if, if we're not adding heat to this, we're just letting it hang out here. Um, if something, it, 
if something decreases the temperature of the water surrounding the system, did the reaction absorb heat or give off heat? Caitlin Solomon. Um, absorbed it? It absorbed it. So it took in heat. So that means that our system is endothermic. Because it, it absorbed heat in order to make that reaction happen. If delta H is endothermic, what's the sign on the delta H? Um, positive. Positive. Okay. So if they're both positive, that, then the answer ended up being A. Okay. Good question. Other questions? Can you go over 1A on the free response on the test? Absolutely. I'm still just kind of confused about like which um, delta H to use. Oh, yes. Okay. So let me go back to the test. Um, Okay, so on 1A, it says calculate this, the value of the standard free energy change, delta G naught, for the combustion. The combustion, that's the huge part right there. So we're looking for the combustion. And if you remember, the combustion is not the same as the delta, delta G of formation. Okay, so um, if we go back up to this reaction, we have the standard heats of formation of the delta H's, and we have the delta S's, and there doesn't usually, there isn't usually a lot of delta S of formation versus combustion for these, but here's the delta S's for each of the elements. And then up top here, underneath our question, it says that the delta H of combustion for the reaction, the whole thing, is negative 3,058 kilojoules per mole. Where the confusion comes in is that the question originally says when there's 2 grams of the sample, we get 64.98 kilojoules of heat. So with 2 grams, we only got that much heat. We didn't get the full 3,058. Okay. So this question, though, is saying, what's the standard? Meaning, if you had one mole of it, if you had, you know, the 298, if you had the one, uh, one mole or whatever, I'm sorry, um, 298, one mole, and one atmosphere, um, what is the delta G then? So that's why you have to come down here. Now, we have the delta H of combustion. So that's good, and we know that it's 298 degrees, so those numbers are right here. What we don't have is the delta S. So you need to calculate the delta S with the products minus reactants equation, and you just plug them in from the table up there, up here, and um, products minus reactants, and that gives you the negative 87.67, and that's in joules. It's very important to remember that it's joules per mole Kelvin, so then you need to put them all on the same units or scale, so it is um, 0 0.08767, negative 0 0.08767, to make them all equal at kilojoules. And then you can solve for delta G that way. Okay. So that was kind of tricky. I can see that. Um, but it's very important to try to, to remember the formation versus combustion, and if it gives you a small amount of a sample, you know, sometimes you're finding just the heat of that small amount versus the standard, which is, um, you're gonna have the, like a one mole of it. Yeah, I made it way too complicated. I first went from grams to moles, and then like figured out what this like kilojoules per moles would be, which of course was already given, so I got the same answer there. <laughs> okay. And then I found the Delta H using like products minus reactants. Oh wow. Oh good fun. It's a lot of extra calculations. Yes, yes. I believe it to be that. That's true. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? Is, is the free response gonna be 
More like the back page or the front page? Um, well, that's a good question. I would say that um, there's not anything about the gas laws. Like, the, you know how 1B had you get the moles, and so there's nothing like that. Yay. Yeah. Um, there, there are, how many questions? I think I have three questions on here. And um, one of them is going to be um, using, you know, you're finding delta G, you're comparing to spontaneity, um, you're doing, uh, you know, something like, um, well, it's not exactly part of this, but if you had a sample of it, how much heat is going to be released, so you got to figure out the number of moles and plug that in. Um, so... There's one, there's one long problem that has two, three, four, five subparts to it. Um, so you, you've got a, um, you know, you've got some answers that are carried down, but there's some that are just um, explanations too in that problem. And then um, the other two problems are going to be using, you've got a little bit of probably the Chateliers you're gonna have to do, and um, you're also going to have to do something with K. So use that equation, that delta G equals negative RT, natural log of K. Um, so I think I have, I have, you know, you're calculating delta G, you're calculating delta S, you're calculating delta G based on K, you're using explanations with Le Chatelier's, and um, you're not... Let me just double check before I say this. You're not having to calculate with specific heat for the free response. In fact, I don't even know if I have a specific heat question on, on the test this time. So. All right. There's 10 multiple choice. It's going to be the same thing that, um, as the test. I'm trying to be consistent with the number of points available for both tests. So there were 10 multiple choice in the first test and 14 points in the free response. So this test, I'm going to do the same thing. 10 questions in multiple choice, 14 points in free response. Are we going to, is there? Hold on. Okay. Oh, never mind. That's when you said that's not going to be on there. The gas law. Right. I'm not going to put gas laws on there this time. I will have to say, I, I, I want to... Um, once we get through acid bases, and then I think we do kinetics and then electrochemistry, and that might take us about a month. It might take us through March or something. And then um, I really want to spend some time doing free response type questions where it combines the different, um, different units into the same question. Because I think that's going to be... I think that's where a weakness lies of most AP students because you get into one mode of thinking. Like we're having our test on one type of question. Yeah. And so students tend to do a little bit better with that, but then you start throwing in, oh, and they're like, oh, I don't remember that. Or so if we can get everybody thinking in those different directions, I think it would be very helpful. Yeah, I agree. Kind of for me, like with um, number one, mm -hmm. I am a free response. Since yes. you had said that, like, uh, the co like college board didn't usually give us use useless information, I was thinking that we had to use the standard heat of formations. Oh, right. So I think it would have made more sense if all the parts were there. Right. So it did, like, come into play at some point. You're right. You're right. That would be helpful. Um, I think that um, I like to. I I'd like to go back to. I think I, I don't know. I'll have to talk to you guys after the unit's done. But I feel like doing. Splitting up thermo sometimes makes it easier, but um, I'm having to take questions that used to be one whole question that I would put on a test, and then I'm splitting it up, and I'm forgetting to take parts out or leave parts in. And so you're right; like the extraneous information um, is not really extraneous. You just not I just, you just don't have that question on this test. So. So are we gonna get something like this, where it gives us extra information on the uh, Let me take a look. I don't believe so, actually, as I'm looking at it. There are a couple tables, but it contains information that you will need. Um, 
there might actually, there might be one question where I give you, uh, oh no, you need to, oh, there might be one question where I give you like an, a, a Delta H you don't need, but, um, but it's not like a whole table of information. I'll, I'll double check it, but I, you know, it just, um, I would say that that it is important to be able to discern what information you need and don't need. So um, just be careful about that. Um, I'm not going to take it off the test now. Chris, uh, calculations in Thermo for the R value, it's always the one that's 8.3. Etc. Yes. Right? Yes. Say yes, that's one true. And then you need the other one. Yes, that's correct. So, okay. um, it's interesting, but that if, to me, but the R. So in, in talking about delta G, it's free energy. So you need the R that has joules in it, which is the eight point three one joules per mole Kelvin. Um, it's interesting to me that the other R is point zero eight to one, but it's liters atmosphere over mole Kelvin, which almost makes you think there's this easy conversion between liters and atmospheres and joules, but, um, but the important part is that it's, they're both over mole Kelvin and that you're using the 0 0.0821 specifically anytime the pressures of gases are involved, gases and their pressures. But if you're talking about the energy of the system, then you're going to be looking at the 8.31. Uh, oh my goodness, I think I just realized I have a oh. Never mind. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going <laughs> to. Mm -hmm. I would get end up giving you guys a distinct advantage over the rest of the class. Wouldn't be very fair. Okay. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So be prepared for something unexpected. Um. <laughs> it, well, it's not totally unexpected, but. Uh. I feel like if I say anything more at this point, I can tell you after the test tomorrow. Just, <laughs> just. Just study your study your 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 exam, your old exam. I think, yeah, study your old exam. That's what I would say. Okay. All right. Do you guys have any other questions? No, I don't think so. I okay. Think I'm good. Okay. Well, this is a pretty short one, um, so I should be able to get this. If if anybody asks you guys or texts or asks about the session. Um, this should be up in like 45 minutes. So I'm expecting like 9.15. If we get off like right now, then it should be up by 9.15. Okay. 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 Well, please get some rest tonight and I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.